I have had a great deal amount of people come to me who have been devastated by this economy and really have nothing. And I've suggested to them that they first get their mind fully awakened to get ahead of the curve so they never fall victim to the next series of traps that are set for them. I've also encouraged them to cut out toxic influences in their lives and build strong networks of like-minded people. I then ask them to focus on creating real skills that will be more valuable in the next paradigm and stockpiling food and ammo by simply just buying more than what they normally do and skip on things that don't mean anything like cigarettes, soda, pizza, beer, and lotto tickets. And I've also told the story of, of a member of mine that is a married father of three who delivers pizza for a living and that every day on the way home from work buys a few mercury dimes from his local coin shop and pays himself in real money. And let me tell you that over the past few years, he's created a, a very respectable stack of silver. But today I want to tell you about a way that's even easier to inflation-proof your savings. Gresham's Law is the law that bad money drives out good money. People quickly realized in 1965 when the Treasury introduced a base copper sandwich coins like dimes and quarters that they were garbage, so that anybody with half a brain saved every single pre-1965 90% silver coin that they can find. And for many years, people have been picking through these stashes looking for silver dimes and quarters that their metal content was worth more than the face value of the coin. In fact, a $1,000 face bag of pre-1965 silver U.S. coinage goes for around 22 times the face value, or $22,000. Now, I have noticed that the premiums have been rising significantly on constitutional silver, and I believe that this will be the first form of silver that will disappear, as it has some of the lowest premiums, most divisible, and most recognized forms of silver and the fact that it hasn't been produced for close to 50 years. I will keep an eye on this market, but it's not too late to do something similar to what those smart people did back in 1965. The U.S. nickel has essentially been unchanged since the end of World War II. It is still a 5-gram coin that is an alloy of 75% copper and 25% nickel. And according to Coinflation.com, 1946 to 2011 nickel with a 5-cent face value has a present-day value of just over 5 cents. Now, I have seen it as high as $0.08 cents in 2011, which was more than 150% of its melt value. But the story gets better than that. So while the nickel has come down because both of those metals are highly industrial metals, as we get to the end game of the currency collapse that comes with massive inflation, all real assets will rise significantly as it will take more and more worthless dollars to buy the exact same amount of goods and services. But the nickel story is getting much more interesting because there is a great deal amount of labor, manufacturing, and transportation of these nickels, and that it's worth much more than just the melt value. In fact, the United States Treasury puts the cost in making each nickel at 11.2 cents. That's more than double face value, and that's the reality of what these coins cost to produce. Now comes news that the U.S. is going to be, quote, introducing cost-effective materials beginning in 2013. This will, quote, save the United States government $75 million. $75 million? Really? The United States government has the world's reserve currency, can print unlimited amounts of money, can bail out too big to fails with trillion dollar lifeboats, and we're wondering why the United States Treasury is taking this grand effort to debase coins for a measly $75 million? The answer is, they don't want you to have a lifeboat when they crash the dollar. So the government's idea right now is we're going to export our way out of this. And yeah. when I asked a senior member of the Obama administration last week, how are we going to grow exports if we won't allow nominal wage deflation. And he says, we're just going to kill the dollar. And I said, okay, more you mean. That was Kyle Bass of Hyman Capital and is one of the sharpest individuals out there. And he's actually bought $1 million of nickels from the Treasury. Now, I know that there were some transportation costs that went into it, but a Treasury official asked Kyle why he did it, and he says, I just like nickels. But the reality was those million dollars worth of face value nickels were worth $1.5 million when he bought them. And that was a 50% return on investment in real wealth. Now since then, it has gone down to his initial face value $1 million investment because nickels are now worth a nickel again. But that is why I like this trade so much. In real terms, the metal that he got never got smaller. And in fiat value, it never went below the legal tender value. But when inflation does come along, and the dollar does collapse, and the failure of the financial and political paradigm, the real value of those nickels will go up significantly. So this is a fun thing you can do with your family. It costs nothing, and you'll be creating a low barrier of entry protection for real money in the future. And I believe that when this happens, these nickels will easily be worth two times the value, because that's what it costs the mint to create these coins. 
but they will be highly sought after in the anger phase of humanity as a means of barter. I mean, there was a time where there was penny candy and you can get apples for a nickel. Now, some may ask, why not pennies? And that's because that they're, the current ones are 97% zinc, but pre-1983 copper pennies are worth two and a half times face value. And while you're sorting through all those nickels, be sure to keep an eye out for 1942 and 1945 nickels that were made with 35% silver because the nickel was so badly needed during the wartime industrial use. Now those war nickels are probably long gone from most stashes, but if you do find one, it's worth 33 times face value. One thing that you will realize when you start doing this is that this is really not the best way of storing wealth in a little space, which is why I'm fully invested in silver. 300 face value in nickels weighs about 68 pounds and takes up the size of a medium flat rate box. Meanwhile, the same weight in silver is worth $32,000. The nickel strategy is best suited for those that are on the edge of survival and is not the best method of transporting a lot of wealth into the next paradigm. But it certainly can't hurt going through your change and getting rid of all those debased pennies, dimes, and quarters out of your change and getting real wealth like the nickel. One thing you can be sure that the government is going to lie to you all the way up until the trap is shut. Don't, one, other, one other key takeaway is don't believe these governments when they tell you that everything is going to be fine, that they're going to solve these problems. I mean, think about Mexico in 94. I know this, this hit home here for Texas pretty hard, but if you remember the tequila crisis, uh, the Mexican government was making affirmative determinations that they would never restructure, they would never devalue. In fact, the day before they devalued 60%, they said, we won't devalue. So the government can never tell you what they're about to do. Uh, they try to fight it tooth and nail, and they have to lie to you all along the way. It's just a fact. You know, some of the mm -hmm. ECB bankers have said this publicly um, because they'll be, they'll be accused of being pro-cyclical if they don't lie to you. So I, I think the key takeaway is develop your own opinion. Go look at these numbers. The numbers are pretty, in, pretty easy to go find. And don't listen to me. Go develop your own opinion. And, and maybe you'll find places where you think I'm wrong. I'm, I've been wrong uh, um, plenty of times. I just hope I'm right 51% of the time. Listen to all and follow none. <laughs>